Hello again, comrades. It is me, Matmus, your one and only. Thank you again for joining me on this video today. We are discussing naval firepower, and this ship really is bristling with that firepower. Yes, of course, we are talking about the Battlecruiser class Kirov ships, and they are absolutely amazing. The world's largest surface combatant out there right now, other than aircraft carriers. Of course, the United States of America really does dominate the seas when it comes to its massive nuclear-powered aircraft carriers and amphibious assault ships and the like, but Russia really does take the number one spot for the biggest, most heavily armoured surface combat ship that is out there. And being that it's a battlecruiser, it has to stick up to that name. Uh, it is almost a battleship in my eyes. It is absolutely incredible. Now, we will discuss this ship as a overall review. Um, I don't really try and put too much of my opinion on it uh, to the fact that I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Uh, so we'll just go over its overall features and then put a little bit of my take on the end. Designated by the West as battle cruisers, as their size and armament puts them somewhere between a battleship and a heavy cruiser, these bristling relics of the Cold War are so menacing that they are one of the main reasons why America's Iowa-class battleships were brought back into service by the Reagan administration. Russia currently just has one of the four of these 827-foot-long monsters that were built in active duty service, that being the Peter the Great, which is also the flagship of the Russian Northern Fleet. The third ship in the Kirov class line, the Admiral Nakimov, is being modernized and will be online by the end of the decade, and the second in its class, the Admiral Lazarev, will be retrofitted and redeployed by the early 2020s. Admiral Ushkov, formerly the Kirov, may also be modernized and put back on patrol, although no real hard timeline has been put in doing so, and it could be quite restrictive due to the fact that Russia is trying to work heavily on its financial difficulties it is having with the armed forces all round. The Kirov originally became operational in 1980, with her sister ships following about every four years aside from the last in her lineage, Peter the Great, which was commissioned in 1998 due to her financial turmoil following the fall of the Soviet Union. These ships are really true leviathans of the sea and displace 28,000 tons when loaded, which is three times that of America's Ticonderoga class of cruisers, but less than half of the retired Iowa class. The Kirovs rely on a pair of nuclear reactors. Yes, it is a nuclear-powered ship, very similar to that of the aircraft carrier class of the United States. However, this is pretty much just a cruiser. The Kirov has to use its pair of oil-fired steam turbines that put out a combined 140,000 shaft horsepower. This combo allows these ships to sprint at over 30 knots for about 1,100 miles straight. When running on nuclear power alone, without the turbine boost, she can sustain around 20 knots continuously. Over 700 sailors operate these massive ships, which is about double that of the America's Ticonderoga class. This large complement makes a good sense when you examine just how much firepower this thing can actually project. They are bristling with guns, missiles, rockets, expansive vertical launch systems, and with hundreds of missiles at its disposal. The Kirovs were built to counter the large American carrier groups while also defending their own flotillas. The ship's primary offensive punch comes from the 20 SSN-19 Shipwreck long-range anti-ship missiles. These 7.5 ton robotic missiles are launched at angles in salvos of at least 4 missiles and work as a team to autonomously attack their target from hundreds of miles away at a high supersonic speed. After launch, the lead missile ascends to high altitude and works as the command and control platform for the others that skim along at low altitude. Basically, the little brothers of the big guy flying above is Big Brother uh, launching them into other ships, which I was fascinated by and which I will be doing a video on in the future because I've never heard of that kind of weapon system before. If the lead missile, though, is destroyed, another climbs up and takes its place as the Big Brother, almost like a chain of command of death. The SSN-19 uses active radar homing or home on jam for terminal guidance and can use third party or maritime patrol aircraft, ships helicopters or satellites etc. Having dozens of these missiles flying out from the Kirov's class of ships was one of the biggest fears of any admiral from the western side, especially, obviously, during the Cold War. For air defense, the Kirov boasts updated versions of the deadly S-300F and the S-300FM, or FORT, long-range surface air missiles. These missiles fly at near hypersonic speeds and can reach out about 100 miles from its launch point, giving the ship a fairly good defensive range bubble from its quite high threat of aircraft coming in to attack it. They can even fire far over the horizon and autonomously scan for targets such as low-flying cruise missiles. Peter the Great packs 96 of these deadly telephone pole-sized SAMs, 
usually about 48 S300Fs and 48 S300FMs. For close-in aerial threats, Peter the Great packs a pair of OSA MA point defense missile turrets, each holding 20 rounds. The radar-guided missiles can be rapidly fired and hit multiple targets at about 8 miles away, even if they are moving at high speed. In addition to these turrets, the most up-to-date configuration of the Kirov class also has a bow-mounted vertical launch system containing no less than 128 rounds of SA-N9 Gauntlet short-ranged missile SAMs. This system is a maritime version of the Tor mobile SAM system that has really gone throughout the world. These missiles can be fired very rapidly and engage targets up to half a dozen miles away. Her final layer of aerial defense is made up of six Kashtan Chestnut close-in weapon systems which are tied into two control interfaces. These suckers pack a pair of radar and letra optically guided high rate fire 30mm cannons and eight short range 9M311 guided missiles. Additionally, there are 24 more of these ultra maneuverable point defense missiles stored in rapid reloading rotatory magazines for the Kashtan's deck mount. This configuration equates to 192 9M311 missiles available for close in defense at any given time, along with thousands of rounds for the 30mm. This ship is almost, in some regard, impenetrable from most aerial attack. The Kirovs also pack the mighty AK-130 dual guns just forward of the helicopter pad. This dual barrel beast is a 130mm cannon, it's liquid cooled and can sling shells at over 10 miles with very good accuracy. It can be radar, optically or even guided via electronic support measures where it targets an enemy radar emitter and can also be used for anti-aircraft roll. The gun turret is remotely controlled and holds 180 rounds of both high explosive and anti-aircraft shells. Beyond its semi-anti-surface anti-warfare roles, the Kirov class has a very serious anti-submarine capability. There's a helicopter deck on the ship's stern capable of operating a KA-2527 anti-submarine or electronic intelligence helicopter. She can carry up to five of these coaxial rotor choppers, although three are normally housed in her unique hangar deck, which is accessible via a trapdoor and elevator system just forward of the helicopter pad. These helicopters can be armed with torpedoes and depth charges, or can be used to relay accurate targeting data on the location of submarines or the carrier groups back to other ships in the fleet. The Kirov class also packs 10 tubes capable of carrying the SSN-16 Stallion rocket-assisted torpedoes. Basically, these missiles can fly out about 50 miles and drop a torpedo right on top of any submarine. Finally, there are three rotary anti-submarine rocket launchers or RBU-1000s and RBU-1200s, each packing between four and five dozen short-range anti-submarine rockets. In order to make all of this armament work, as well as acting as command and control flagship for the entire Russian Northern Fleet, the Kirov class bristles with such massive amounts of tracking and radar arrays, as well as electronic countermeasures, dozens of communication aerials and so forth. Although her radar arrays are nowhere near as advanced as the American phased SP-1 radar system found in the Aegis combat system equipped on both US Navy cruisers and destroyers, they are extremely powerful and have seen some very updated and recent upgrades. Generally, it is assumed that this modern configuration of the Kirov class ship can see large targets at altitude out to over 300 miles, while low flying fighter sized aircraft can be detected at about 50 miles. Additionally, the fact that she packs the S 300 FM makes her the only ship in the Russian Navy that is capable of ballistic missile defense. The massive Kirov class, once thought destined to become another technological victim of the end of the Cold War, is now making a comeback as Russia slowly revitalizes its naval forces. Regardless of her vintage, she is still a very formidable force of any navy to reckon with. As Peter the Great's sister ships come out of retrofit, it will be very interesting to see what the configurations will be, as it's almost certain they will feature Russia's latest naval weaponry. Considering the dismissal state of relations between US and Putin's Russia, the ever-shrimping US Navy should probably pay quite close attention to this ship, and the fact that two more are going to get retrofitted to be even bigger configurations, potentially even more tele you know, technologically advanced configurations, yeah, I mean it's a little, a little unnerving, but of course I'm not really going to side too much in terms of capabilities between the United States. But overall, folks, this ship has a ton of capability. You can put the whole, well, it's a really old ship, blah, blah, blah. But if you think about it, I think this is a fantastic platform. And I'm very surprised that not other countries are looking into doing the same thing. Yes, you know, destroyers, frigates are able to be very quick, very maneuverable, 
can produce lots of them, therefore increasing your network of the Navy around the world, which is the key to any Navy and any naval force is being able to, you know, spread those wings out and go to wherever you can in the world very quickly instead of just having one or two big ships. But if the finances are there, build these things. I mean, this thing has so much firepower. I can't imagine any aircraft coming against this thing and surviving from range, whether it be long-range bombers or, you know, aircraft or even missiles, you know, anti-ship missiles. This thing is bristling with defensive measures. I think its biggest threat, honestly, is going to be submarines. You know, submarines for sure is going to be this thing's killer if it came down to it. Uh, it does have, obviously, some basic defenses to protect itself from submarines but when it comes to overall submarine defense that helicopter is going to be a huge asset to it three of them fit on this thing that just shows you how you know how capable it is considering it's holding all that other fire pounds still has the ability to put bloody helicopters on it too very impressive um i would like to see what's going to come out of the new ships that are coming out in the future that's really really interesting to see I'm sure they're going to be bristling with a ton of new technology that maybe we're not even going to hear about or be told about. But I'm really curious to see what will happen. Anyway, everyone, I hope you learned a little bit about this beautiful ship. Um, I would love to be able to take a walk on board of this thing, but probably never going to happen. <laughs> um, if any of you, you know, from Russia or wherever else have been around this ship or experienced, you know, things with it, please let me know. I'd love to hear your opinions in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, please feel free to... Um, leave a like, leave me a comment, and uh, if you want to support my channel, I would really appreciate you check out my Patreon page, um, the link is in the description box below, and for those of you who have been donating towards my channel, I cannot thank you enough, thank you very much everyone, your support is very much appreciated to support me and my future endeavors on the channel. If you enjoyed today's content and want to see more of me and my channel, the best thing to do is to hit that tiny little bell button by the subscribe button so you can actually get notifications of what's coming up. And I will see you again next time. All the best. Have a great day. Bye-bye.